I want to talk about um, IDEMPIER Georeferencing. That's a new plugin we um, um, uh, introduced for my company, and BX uh, did it. So uh, first, uh, let's talk about me. I am oh an enthusiast. Um, I am a CEO of two companies. Uh, my first uh, reason to go to IDEMPIER was my uh, beverage dealing business. And um, then I was so convinced of the uh, concept that I created uh, or I founded a, an IT company together with Carlos Ruiz. And um, so I am here in, in uh, two personalities. And um, my talk is more about the user side. Uh, what was our problem and how we solved it. And then at the end you will see what we did. And um, I like to do things in a community-friendly way, and I like to do things in a universal way. So I hope that someone says, ah, I have seen uh, that, and I can use it, and uh, I find other ways to use it. Uh, someone told about Unix, that a real good software um, is when someone uses it for something that the programmer never imagined. <laughs> Uh, yeah, um, <coughs> our problem is we have uh, 500 customers and a big delivery area and we have 10 trucks to deliver things. Um, we have drivers, co-drivers and everything must be organized. And the uh, problem in our com uh, company is that um, the requirements are very special. Every customer has special problems and special times and special trucks and special drivers he likes. And that's a lot of knowledge, and you need to do that very fast in the morning that, uh, so the trucks can leave the company. And you have like half an hour to organize everything. And we need an, um, a user interface that allows us to do that in, a, in the best way. Um, yeah. Um, we uh, introduced a new data model. Um, I will give you a short overview. At first, we introduced, um, we used resources to stop. Resources to collect our trucks. The resource type LKW is German for trucks. Uh, this resource type is used to um, to get our uh, trucks. These are the plates, and another resource type type is Fahrer. That is German for driver. And we have the drivers and co-drivers, and in the description, uh, all special things that has to be known to get a perfect uh, organization. Um, something we introduced new is the tour. A tour is like one truck going in one direction at one day. And um, that is a new structure. And you see we uh, have a print color that comes later. And we have a short term and a longer term for the truck. And the tour connects to the business partners that is in the location. We have a new field to tell this business partner has this tour. So uh, every business partner has like his own truck or his own driver. This uh, tour field is copied to the sales orders. You see it here. And there you see that this sales order to this customer, Miss College, um, is on route T4. So this is the base data. Um, now we have to put everything together. And that is an example uh, for one day, that is the 24th. Um, that are all trucks we have, or all tours we have at this day. And um, you see that this tour has a driver and a co-driver and a truck. That seems very simple. The problem now is to organize this data in a fast way and with a good user interface to work with that. Yeah? 
up to now you know everything and that was nothing special. But now we have the problem that this truck is wrong and this uh, driver is uh, sick and this driver lost his driving license and uh, this driver comes at 10 and not at 7 in the morning. And um, we have to change things here. And the basic idea was to have something to move or to deactivate this driver, have like a context menu or everything, and to move people from here to there. Uh, you cannot move things here. You know this interface and you cannot do that. Um, the first uh, we did was this. Yeah, that's better. Um, we don't use pictures for all drivers, but I have some, so you see uh, it's possible to have drivers. And this is an, not a horizontal, but a vertical view of the same data you saw. And that allows us to say, one moment, please, so a bit smaller. That allows us to say this truck is broken and we deactivate it. And it asks why, I say, broken today from now and I think it will take one week to repair it so now it is in the broken range and it is wet and this tour has no truck so I need a truck from the west trucks and can move it here yeah and when you go to the delivery and refresh, you see the data as we changed it. Uh, the same is with the drivers. Yeah, I can just say this, this man should go with him as a co-driver because the work is so hard, he needs someone else or he needs a third one. And that allows to change the data you saw before in a very new way. We have these 10 um, entries, uh, this is 10 records for every day. So every day we copy the data from yesterday and change it. And so we know exactly at which day we did what, who, which driver was at which customer. Uh, yeah. That was the first thing to do. The next thing was that we used the tour data uh, in the Kanban board. Um, I think most of you know the Kanban. It's a very great plugin and it's uh, really, um, uh, uh, really very flexible and very universal, universal usable. And um, these are orders. I will do it smaller so you see all the orders and you see um, columns for our tours and now I can say uh, that perhaps this one has to be carried with a special tour and I can change that. Mm, yeah, And this too. So I have two orders on this truck and ca they can move to another uh, truck. Um, this helped us a lot. We worked with this Kanban board for three years. And um, we still, you still see that's a normal day in our company. And we have up to 200 orders organizing this way. And that's a lot, yeah? When you see it goes down and it's hard to move that from here to there. And it's hard for you and even for me to know what is in which direction and which truck goes north and south and which goes over the line or not. And that was not very obvious uh, what to do. Um, that was uh, still a problem we had. Um, we thought a lot about that and we changed the information that is printed here. Uh, but at the end, it was still hard to do for new employees to do that and to do it right and to do it in half an hour because uh, every minute more uh, means that 20 people are waiting there and cannot work. Um, what we did now new is that we uh, introduced a tour map um, in our installation. It is hidden behind this button. Uh, I can try that.
it takes some time. That is because of the Wi-Fi here. Uh, one of the things, issues we still have is that it loads uh, data from the internet. Um, at home, that is very fast. Yeah? You showed two different diagrams. The second one was the uh, Kanban board. Yeah. The first one looked amazingly similar to the Kanban board, but it was not, correct? So it, uh, it is a special uh, uh, code for us. Um, I like the idea, and I think that can be uh, made more flexible. <laughs> but, but what you have seen is not, was not a Kanban board. It was uh, special designed. Yeah, and a day. And a route. Yeah, and a day on a special day. Yeah. Um, just to explain, these these are the. Uh, okay. So, these are the records we we um, manipulated through this interface. And we have like thousands of these records of all the times, every day 10 records. And uh, that is in interesting data to see what we did in the past to have statistics about that. And uh, that combines to uh, yeah, the georeferencing data we want to collect with our trucks to know which truck and which driver did at which time which things and to connect it to customers and to know how long do we need with one customer and how long does one driver take and how long does <laughs> another driver take and perhaps uh, have a payment system based on that or uh, yeah, have a lot of performance data. And that's why we collect all this data every day. Yeah, okay. Um, the tour map is here. So this is the map we did. This is uh, basically the uh, plugin I want to show. <laughs> and you see the different tours um, with different colors. Uh, I can zoom in. This is our main, um, our main city and uh, the main area. You see that looks a bit crazy, but is, this is just some kilometers around our company. So it's not so hard to mix uh, things, but you see when we go further to uh, outside, we have to think if the red points are left and the blue points right. And um, perhaps when, when we zoom, the resolution here is different, okay? When we, you zoom, you see that we go to Duisburg for blue and uh, what's the English? word for that. <laughs> we go to Oberhausen with this color and uh, there is a brown spot here and this is strange. Yeah, I don't know why brown is here and brown is there. So I can look at this customer. I know which customer is I it is and it says to me uh, I have to deliver a special day and at a time and uh, so I know special things from the description of the order. Uh, sometimes uh, we have customers that just need a special truck for several reasons or they need uh, uh, like a trailer or something we have to uh, use. Um, in this case, this is just wrong. Yeah, and now I can take this uh, number and go to the order uh, tab and change it or I can go to the Kanban board and say, ah, it was college here. And I can change that. It moves. And when I refresh the map, yeah, it looks better. <laughs> <laughs> so that was an example how we work. Uh, what is kind of missing is that we can change the tour here. It was in some user interface that's not yet possible. Uh, but for now, we work very well with that. Um, yeah, that's what we do. That was the first part. Any questions to the functional part?
the next part is how, how it works to look into the configuration. Some questions? Okay. Uh, this is a system uh, um, of uh, item here. It's a system client. Um, when you look for geo referencing, you see two new menu entries. One is the configuration, that is this window. Can you see that? Ah, translation is not so important, yeah. Uh, most of the things are um, done by SQL. So you see there is an SQL form uh, clause that very good explains what we have and what we want. Um, in our case, we have an additional WHERE clause uh, from the process that calls that. That is an, an, an special process for my company. But in principle, you can add uh, clauses here. And that makes it very flexible to use um, SQL. You can enter a clause to find the longitude and the lat latitude. Uh, if they are not known, the, we use a web service to collect them based on the address. So this works transparent in most cases. <laughs> um, we have a clause to get the title and the information in the tooltip you have seen and, uh, uh, yeah, and also uh, the color. So that can be adapted to some other uh, data structure that just gives some kind of color or some kind of uh, geo-referencing data. And um, so in principle, it's possible to show your most value customers and to use colors uh, for turnover or for open items or whatever you like. Yeah. I think. Oh. Yeah. So the purpose of the last page you showed is to compare the data with the result in the API call to render the map to the solver. Hmm? I, uh, sorry. The purpose, the purpose of this, this record yeah. is to collect the data that will ultimately be used, pushed into an API call. Yeah, to an API call. So I, so I ah, the, the, the data is cached in the business partner or in the location record. We added two fields to the location record, longitude and latitude. But the purpose of this record? No. This record defines what we want to visualize. Yeah, when, uh, when you call the geo-referencing, this is a normal interface you use. Yeah, we use it from our Kanban, that is special. But in the normal interface you use it like that, and you say there are different defined maps. Yeah, that can be different configuration records. You can see I want a turnover map, or I want a tour map, or I want whatever and you choose one of them, this will not work because uh, our, my map is intended to work from the Kanban, but you choose one and then you get the right map. So every configuration record makes one entry here and gives you a different view. Yeah, does that answer your question? Okay. Yeah, we have some more ideas to add, uh, cache the map, um, allow links to directly work with the record to open the, the record we uh, visualize. And um, yeah, a process to set parameters or something, but um, that's possible with very low effort because I think Diego did it the right way and uh, in a flexible way. And uh, yeah, I like people who 
have more ideas because I think that is a feature that can be used in many different ways and we can add a lot of funny things here. <laughs> so please tell us when you have ideas and want to do that. You can use his plugin and then you can track the trucks, you know. Yeah, that is, uh, you have heard that uh, <laughs> <laughs> was my, uh, my plan, yeah. <laughs> Uh, that's something we want to do. Okay, that's it. Any questions? Ah. Yeah? Any idea how it's possible to display this map outside the without login? Let's say you have a monitor or televisor in an office and you just coming in the office is always staying connection without walking. Hmm, good idea. I'm, I'm the user. Perhaps Diego can answer that. Yeah, it works as Sean mentioned. You get the data from the configuration window, and that creates a call for an API. That actually generates an HTML that will be played within the call. So if you have that in an HTML, HTML website, then that is there. You don't need an API right? And the login and session? You don't need. Uh, what you need is an access token for the API. Uh -huh. But you don't need anything from the API besides the configuration web. But then you cannot uh, actualize it. <coughs> No, but it wants live data, yeah? To project the map in a screen in the warehouse, in the warehouse, or maybe a customer department, so you have a big big plate or tape or monitor, and nobody answers, like uh, in IKEA, if you're going and you see Kanban, no touch, just a small computer behind, mm -hmm. in, just refreshing and just a yeah, I think uh, that's something that uh, was asked also for the Kanban plugin. Say for Kanban. It would be interesting. For Kanban also to display the Kanban in a board, in the press it periodically. That is not really known. Yeah, yeah but for it's very to go to the Kanban. At this moment, we need loading. We are using always this Kanban for logistic. Uh -huh. We yeah. cooperate with the uh, BX. That's what? what, 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 what 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 is the problem to have a view like that? I think that is what you want, yeah. You have to steal that machine. Yeah, that should be not hard. Well, the thing is, this is a first version of the map. Diego is going to show something. But maybe this is related to topic uh, to because on the client side library you can do that do this very simple way. It it would be interesting when you change something in the Kanban to refresh that. Yeah. Well, what I see is this is a particular view of the data. Yeah? In Kanban, Kanban is the same. In Kanban you configure, you have data. And you are configuring a way to see the data in a board with cards. And here is very similar. You are configuring data to be seen in a map with icons. Yeah? So what I expect and it's confirming yeah. is that most all of the evolution that the Kanban has is going to be added here, yeah? So like being able to move. Being able to change things in the map, being able to do auto refresh. I think we don't have um, access roll access. Okay. Um, yeah. Roll access spaces, access to the map. Mm -hmm. Many things that the Kanban already has are, can be applied to this because it's just a different view of the same problem, similar mm -hmm. problem, different view. <coughs> Maybe this needs, needs to be analyzed from the business perspective. What, like, logistic manager in the their house needs? Uh -huh. and, the, and the icons and the colors maybe are different depending on who is 
Yes, with the track, and what it can change, can change the color if, uh, if the... Ah, yeah, based on the uh, user. Some people... The red things are the my problem. The priority of the customer, mm -hmm. yes. whether the track, whether the turnover of the operation. Yeah. You can see when, when it's so delivered, finish delivered, it's, it's just mm -hmm. the color. It's the same thing that we are doing in Kanban, but in a map. It's typical of Korean companies. We spoke here, we have one attendee from Korea, and uh, we have current Korean customers that don't like work with computers. They like just Excel and formatting emails. That is okay. But they like big effects. Let's say, okay, in the warehouse, a big monitor and oh, nice numbers, nice Kanban, and so on. We don't touch you. Effort. Mm -hmm. Just Perhaps I it's to possible to extract that as a JPEG also? With a as a what? As a JPEG. Yeah, then you can export it to a web server or... Yeah, but if, uh, for example, this should be transport management system, then you can see live tracing, mm -hmm. yes. So yeah. The, the first thing my employees asked was how to print it. Mm -hmm. So that's a similar problem. <laughs> that's hard to print. No, but you, you could put uh, this in a... Uh, Television in your office and everybody can see and refresh. Yeah, now it does not <laughs> refresh. <laughs> but it's yes. Yes. Yeah. Good idea. I like that. Yeah, and, and it. you are right. Some people need things that impress uh, people. Is it just see the oversight? <laughs> yeah, that's my. That was my approach. Yeah. Yeah. No, it was just my idea. I don't know if Diego can do that. I didn't did not code that. <laughs> I'm just the user, uh, and but I think uh, having a JPEG is definitely. A good idea. Yeah. Send it to the battery and to the template. Yeah. So. And does the system automatically allocate drivers to the vehicles, or is there an employee that's manually allocating them? Um, the allocation is copied from yesterday, or from the last working day, and uh, the rest is done manually. Yeah, we, we want to build a rostering system at the moment, and we want to automatically allocate staff to shifts mm -hmm. based on employee preferences, shift details, and location shift mm -hmm. details. So yeah, we, we saw that we needed a process that runs at night that copies the things, and uh, in the first version, I thought about uh, uh, doing um, check if that works. Yeah, some trucks you need a special drive, uh, driver license for a special truck, and you need a license for a trailer and everything like that. Uh, in our case, uh, we said that configuring everything and doing it right every time um, is harder than seeing that page and just doing it, yeah? Thinking when you move things. Um, but we have 10 trucks. When you have 50 trucks, it's different. Yeah, with, with 10, I have 20 people and I know everyone, yeah? And I know he comes later and he does not, uh, is not allowed to drive uh, uh, trailers or things like that, that is in our mind and my employees, uh, my, my, the, the, the employee that works with that uh, told me he wants to do it from his mind. <laughs> and things change, yeah? Uh, you have to <coughs> renew licenses and we change uh, trucks and weights on trucks and things like that. And it's harder to follow every change 
um, that's my, I, I'm very sorry about that in my company, but uh, often people say, ah, I cannot drive for two weeks, I need a new card. And uh, no one writes it in the system because everyone knows, yeah. And then uh, errors happen. But when someone wants to use it for a bigger company, you definitely need to improve that process. Um. Jeff, do you have any questions? Can we tackle uh, route optimization? Hmm? So did you touch on route optimization? Uh, yeah, we thought about that. I'm sorry it does not work. We had that. Um, my drivers don't like it. I'm not sure why, <laughs> but that is one of the next steps. Are you going to do it via an API call, or are you going to do it? How do you? How do you uh, we use an API call. Yeah. And then the second question is, if you were to take this and apply it to maintenance and repair, to making. I d didn't show that. Uh, but it, it seems as though if you were to apply it to maintenance and repairs, instead of using a sales order, you would just use a request as your ticket. A request? So ah, the trucks, the trucks are resources, and the resources allow. Um, this is a truck I, I broke. Yeah. And here is the entry unavailability of the resource. We try to use as much uh, known IDMP tables as possible. And that, that is what we did. You are right, a uh, request can be another way to uh, do that. So in, in your domain, where sales order is the thing that you're acting on, mm -hmm. if you were to take the domain of maintenance and repair, your request is what you're acting on. So it seems like this would be a good application for maintenance and repair. The only difference is instead of using a sales order, you're acting on a, a, a support ticket, which would be a request. Yeah. I think here the problem I had was availability. And to talk about maintenance, uh, I think we need more information. Yeah, because maintenance is sometimes just a small thing that is not unavailability, yeah, like a scratch in the car also. But sometimes the whole car is broken. And um, we, we have, uh, or oh, we want, another s a table to collect maintenance tasks. No, no, no. You're in your case, you're delivering goods. Yeah. I have a customer who is an ISP, and they have customers who call in and say, I have problems, my internet won't work. You can take this and apply it to a customer who has, who has they don't do delivery, they do maintenance and repair. Yeah. They, they, service, they service locations as their business. It seems as though the only difference between what you created is that instead of acting on the sales order, which is the delivery, you would act on a request, which is your... Ah, yeah, yeah, ah, yeah, yeah, okay. So you can show the requests. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, ah, okay. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. You can visualize the requests in the, in the map and even in the Kanban. Yeah. Yeah, that's possible. We, that is what I said we try to make it... Uh, flexi as flexible as possible. <coughs> yeah. Are you able to plan inbound delivery returns? To plan? Are you focusing on shipments, outbound delivery, or also inbound and uh, returning planning? Uh, we do a sales order for every <coughs> contact to the customer when we uh, have inbound things. We do a sales order, and it is in this map. 
let's say if uh, some customers want return material, mm -hmm. they uh, send a request. Yeah, then we do a sales order with a minus. <laughs> Uh, we don't use that. It's common in our business to take things back. Uh, special in our business is that we have a, a, a tight contact to our customers. Our customers uh, call every week. And so you have kind of trust and take things back or you lose the customer. Just to make it more interesting, our customer wants to also pick up purchases as well as deliver shipments. To pick up? Purchases. So he'll order some stuff and say, my truck's going past. I'll get them to stop in and collect those things and bring them back. Ah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 So it's not just sales orders and re yeah, returns. It's also might better be material interesting. Yeah. Well. yeah. Yeah, that's true. And uh, we don't do that very much. But uh, when we do it, we do a sales order to have it in this system, yeah. <laughs> ah, you are right, that's uh, a hole we have not clear solution yet. Yeah. Okay, thanks, perfect. <laughs>